In the year 1805, we the colored members of the Methodist Church in Wilmington thought that we might have more satisfaction of mind than we then had if we were to unite together and build a house for ourselves. The Lord gave us the favor and the goodwill of all religious denominations, and they all freely did lend us help. And by their good graces, we got a house to worship the Lord in. We must incorporate. We must have full autonomy. Our Quaker friends will give us some legal assistance here. These folks will help to clear the rough road ahead. But this is God's work. And he will assist us with all his might if we are faithful to his calling and willing to work day and night for the spiritual good of our brethren. Not just those who are lawfully free, but those still held in bondage at the North and South. We must prove to our countrymen that we are indeed capable of being independent. And we must help them to live up to the concepts of their Declaration of Independence, which states that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Once we begin, we must extend the connection, make it a, a lasting one. Walk all the necessary miles north and south, build a school in close proximity to every new church. Our Quaker brethren have taken an interest in our education, but it is the Lord's will that we take this great joy and burden upon ourselves. This is only the beginning. We have felt the pain that springs from a dividing spirit and by the grace of God, we mean to guard against that on every side. The August Quarterly began by using the name Quarterly identifies it with Methodism because it took the preacher who had a congregation down there about every three months to get back to see how they were doing. It became August because the weather was good and it became a good way to celebrate the freedom that was given slaves who worked in the fields in and around Wilmington and even further south to come and associate with the free Negroes of Pennsylvania and New Jersey who came back for this special session the last Sunday in August. But we should not abandon this because it's a peculiar contribution of what a blend of religion and social desire for betterment will work out when people insist on getting together as they did when they came to Wilmington for the big August quarter every year. It should not be abandoned. It should be kept alive that we may know the roots in our heritage and pass it on to the generations yet to come. Teach a child the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Pay for their schooling for which they will bless your bones when you are laid in the grave, and will know how to live in the world in a sober manner. If we colored people do not unite and try to help ourselves, all that our best friends will do for us will fail. And as this is the case, while they, our best friends, are trying, let us try and by their help, and we helping ourselves, and the Lord helping all, we shall be a people. especially significant and timely to recognize the unique role of the Mother African Union Methodist Protestant Church who originate the Big Portal, served as a station on the Underground Railroad for the freedom of slaves and engaged in many other acts of church and leadership, whereas the First United Church of Africans was established in 1813 under the intellectual leadership of Peter Spencer and his associates.
Now, therefore, I, William T. McLaughlin, Mayor of the City of Wilmington, Delaware, to hereby proclaim Sunday, August the 30th, 1981, as a day of gratitude to the August quarterly. When Peter Spencer walked out of a church here in Wilmington, Delaware, because the black parishioners were required to sit up in the balcony, he walked out with his faith. He walked out and set up a church rather than walked out and gave up on the church. He walked out and decided that he was going to start something new, something new in America, as a matter of fact, not just new in Delaware. probably a forerunner uh, of the civil rights movement because of the fact that he established black independent religion in Wilmington we all have the right to go to a black church and and take in God in any way that we choose to and for this we Peter Spencer stepped out as a slave, defied his masters, the stripes that would have been put on his back, and looked to God from whence comes his help. He took prayer to do it, children. Not only that, but praise, the songs of praise that have gone us from a mighty long way. It was the song that they sing when the task got hard, when they were down there by themselves praying to God and talking and singing a song, a song like, go down Moses, way down in Egypt land, uh, and tell old Pharaoh that I said to let my people go. Uh, this is what Spencer said to the taskmasters, that we have been slaves too long. It's time for God's people to be free. And not only that, it was a preaching of the word, uh, the word of God in our hearts, the word of God down in our souls that, that brought us this far, the Lord has brought us from a mighty long way. We've got something to be proud of this morning. But our children ask us, what's the meaning of all this? Looks like they're reviving that awful big quarterly. Look at them, all in fashion, like slavery had never been done away with. Sure doesn't look that way. What's the point of all this reunion business? Slavery's gone. And the things born of slavery should also be gone. Couldn't agree with you more, my dear. 